cool lower thirds are a great addition to your videos and you can make a lot of different types inside Camtasia like this. Today, we're going to cover six tips on how to customize a free library asset from TechSmith and brand it to be your own. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here and welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Here we are in the TechSmith Assets for Camtasia library online, where you can go and download all kinds of free assets. We're focused here in the lower thirds area because we're going to be using this free asset here called Assist. It's in the library and all you have to do is click on the download button here and you can grab that asset. I've already downloaded it so you see a second copy there. And that's what we're going to use inside to adapt to come up with our own custom one pretty quick. So let's go into Camtasia now. So after you've downloaded it, you double click on the asset and you upload it into your library. In my case here, I put it in the TechSmith asset library I created internally in my Camtasia 2018. And you see here I have the asset, it's called Assist. I click Add to Timeline at Playhead. And now we have it here on the bottom. You see here it comes in and plays, it's quite nice. Tip number one, assess the library asset for change requirements. So if we just look a little more closely here, and we scan across, you're going to see we play. It's got the, the colors orange, white, and the, the uh, vertical lines uh, come across. And then, as you know, in our finished product, we've changed the colors in the branding. We've sped things up. We've added a logo that spins on its entry and on its exit. So there's been a lot of changes. So let's just look inside this asset and look a little more closely. And what we do here is just make it a little bigger and we're going to go up so come back so in the original as it come in so we know we want we see that there's three different colors because so our branding is going to change based on the Gord Eisman branding and then we see here we have our two pieces of text and we also know that we want to change that to be my branded stuff so we're going to have the text to change and then if we look down here we can see that the three lines here are also going to need to be changed and they have animations as well so just observing all the features here because you know we need to be sure that when we trans uh, transform the colors to my branding that everything works clean and there are some tricky things there so again just to summarize so we have you know three shapes and uh, two annotations and a bunch of animations and we added a logo and we're going to be changing the timing to shorten it up because in this finished one, I have it, it's about three seconds shorter. So there's going to be, you know, interesting things to deal with in here. So that's the first step. Tip number two, update quick properties first before doing any ungrouping. This is very important and a quick way to update the lower thirds to get a lot of the work done. So here, when I click on our original as we put it down, Okay, so see here, you'll notice that because I'm at the group level on the top right here, we have a tab called Quick Properties. And in there you see title, subtitle, and then you see our, our rectangles. There's three rectangles, color one, color two, color three, which corresponds to our, our lines because they're rectangles. And we can change these properties quickly. So all we have to do here, and I'm going to show you again uh, that when I open up so you can see kind of what we're, we're adjusting. So the title would be my name. We're going to put in my name because that's what we want in the finished product. Gord Eisman. And in the subtitle, we want to put in my tagline, learn, apply, transform, spell right. Okay. See, that's nice. And then for each of the lines, we want to now adjust the colors based on my branding. So the orange one, we're going to change to blue and the rectangle sorry, the second one, where we have sort of this darker gray, we're going to do a little lighter color one in my branding, and the white one, we're going to leave the same. So now you see those are all done, but um, we don't have the colors for my name uh, 
adjusted yet to the branding. So if I click on my name back up here and click here in the on the letter, we have the ability to change the color right here. So there we go. And then we'll collapse that back up and compress it. Now we have the the the, the name and uh, tagline and it's similar to the finished product. But we can see that the positioning is not quite right. So let's tune that now. Now one of the changes I did was I changed my Learn Apply Transform font size and I reduced it. And you can tinker with this on your own, but just to save time, we go in straight and put in the number I know that worked, which was 50. So that shrinks that down. And then if you'll notice here in the final version, my name the, with the G for the gourd sort of aligns up in a way above the L in the Learn Apply Transform. So now let's fix and align my name where it should be, which should be just above the L. Let's see if we can slide over. And I think we're good about... Let's get a little finessed. There we go. It's pretty close. To, if we look at the finished product, that looks pretty good. So now we have all of that done, and we did all of that work with the quick properties. Now, an important thing to note is that the rectangles, if you notice, have all of these keyframes. There's three keyframes on each rectangle, and they have to do with the positions where the animations have, have uh, you know, different uh, start and end endpoints to help with uh, producing our end product, right? So they're all custom animations. But if I didn't use the, the quick properties to uh, change the colors here, I would have had to uh, gone in one by one with each of these tracks and turned this feature on the edit all animations mode, which would have allowed the color to be applied universally up across the beginning and end points. In other words, all animation keyframes on each track, I would have to have been sure that this feature was on. But because we did it through at this level, at the quick properties, everything sort of executed nice and uh, quick for us. Tip number three, tune the speed of execution. So first off, as you know, over here, we have the, the piece we've been building, the lower thirds, as I've been going along with you. This still has the full length of almost 10 seconds. Then and there's the finished product. But what I did here to help you appreciate the speed is I stacked the finished product, which is right here, this one from here, I put it on top. And here's the original down below with the orange color as we added it to the play line. So I want you to watch. So look, as you can see, there's two sets of things. Observe that. The, the blue branded one is mine, which is the finished product. Look at how it executes faster than the other one. And you notice that the position of, of the, uh, the sticks, so to speak, or the lines, is a little inside to the right. And then you see it's executing faster. And you can see how everything's a little lagging behind with the orange one in behind. Then we have the added logo spin on. And then the blue sticks come to the end, and then they disappear. So if you look down at the bottom, that's where we end there. And in the original one, there's still this extra piece to go before we're done. So I just wanted you to see to appreciate the positioning of the sticks or some things we still need to adjust as well as the speed. So now I'm going to just rem remove those from our view because we don't need them. And let's go back here. So now in the finished version right here, when we open up the group, you're going to see that each of the last three of these tracks here, which have the shape for the sticks, I've added the property, sorry, the uh, visual effect clip speed in each of these, okay? And it's at 1.43. So we're, what we're gonna do is add that now into the one we're building, but also observe that the text fits in, the text display pieces here fit within a certain range of the speed of uh, the execution of the animations and, and the timing. Okay, so we're going to come back in here. I'm going to select these three. I'm going to click on control click, control click, and then I'm going to go to visual effects. Okay, and I'm going to add clip speed. So just drag it down and you see they're all framed in green and highlighted, the selected ones, and they all have the effect added. And now if I go in, you'll see the clip speed says one times. 
And I know in the end product, I have it at about 1.43. So I'm going to go till I get about 1.43 here. There we go. And then likewise, go to each of the other two tracks, pull them back. And as you notice, look, as I pull back, it's automatically adjusting the scaling of the animations as well. How cool is that? Do the last one now. Okay, so now those are all done, and that's sim going to be similar to the timing and speed here. So we can see that that goes nice and quick in the animations, but the text is all out of sorts, right? So if we come back here and look the text, we'll see that the the text here um, for the, the the learn apply transform ends up coming just a bit before the um, the arrowhead of this animation here. So we're going to work on trimming back our text in here. And then when it start, the, the pairing starts about midway th through this. So let's just approximate. And I'm just using this as a simple guideline to help us. So first off, I'm going to select these two. And I'm going to shrink them back. And we said it came about to a little bit before that arrowhead in the first animation. And that this part starts about midway in there. So let's just see how, how that turns out to play. And we can also close back the size of our group. And let's see how that plays out now. Okay, there, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's see, let's just play. Okay. All right, there's still some tuning to come. One thing we can do to perfectly time the text to be like the final one we have here, see how far in. And then you can see we are about one second and seven frames for the start of that text here. And then from the end, from the, the last one to the end, we're about, let's just see here, 11 frames. So let's see if we can tune that here. So I said one second and seven frames on this end. There we go. So one with one second and seven frames, we'll highlight those and bring that back a little earlier. And then at the end, we said it's about 11 frames. So let's just see how close we are. Perfect. All right, so now we should be pretty close. Just allow that to play again and take a look. Great. All right, on to the next step. Tip number four, tune the animations. In our case, we have two animation elements that we want to address. The first one, is the simple one. You can see here in the one that the uh, lower thirds that we're building out to get to our final product that the learn apply transform text kind of lags behind the showing of the Gord Eisman. So I'd like to speed that up. That's just a remnant from the way the original design was in terms of the way the text came across, even though we trimmed it. You can see in the final version here that the learn apply transform comes out a little faster. So that's one animation tune item that we want to do. And to demonstrate the second one, I'm just going to stack the one where we're at over top the final one. And if you notice, you'll see here that the sticks or the vertical bars are to the left and, and they all line up together there to go for the logo. But when they come where they start and where they end are in two different places. So I wanted to, in the, in the final design, tighten up the sticks so that they would appear just before, you know, they come just before the letter G. So we're going to tune that. So let's work on that now. Okay, to address the first animation uh, change, it, which again is the uh, speed in which the Learn Apply Transform comes out, we want to adjust the fade behavior. So we're going to get the context of the right text. That's this here. And as you can see, the, it lags a little behind the Gord Eisman. So let's, if we click on the behavior, we can see on the in properties, 
I have fade in linear, but I have speed 83. So what I ended up doing in the finished solution, I increased the speed to 94. And I also just, um, quickened the offset so that it would go a little faster to 0 0.04 seconds. Okay. Now if you watch, it's as simple as voila, we got our speed back. So that works just like this now. Okay. For the second animation element we want to change, we need to go and adjust the X axis values for the begin keyframes of each of these and animation elements and as well the end keyframes for the first one. And then at the end, we need to adjust where we end up as well. So when we come back, okay, so we're going to do that. And you know, I'm going to cheat again just because I know here that we have a begin keyframe and this has already shifted. The X has moved over to the right and we have a value of minus 478.2. And in this one, we have an in value of minus 492.6. And then down here, we have an in value of minus 506.9. So I'm going to put those values into both the beginning and and end keyframes here. So that just changes the reference point to be starting the x axis over to the right. So here we go. And then likewise, on the end, as you can see, this end comes too far to the left. We need to adjust the end keyframes as well. Beautiful. So you can just play it now. There we go. So now we've addressed all the animation changes we need to do. And the last piece remaining is coming up with our next tip. Tip number five is add any additional visual branding elements. So in my case, we have, as you can see here in the finished product, as we scroll, as we um, scan through, we have the logo that spins in and spins out and it, and it goes from, uh, it grows, spins in a clockwise manner. Then you see it pulsating the background and then it counterclockwise spin in a shrink. So we want to put that in. And what I'm going to do for the sake of time, because we're getting on in length with the tutorial, is just walk through that piece here inside the finished product. But to accommodate that in the one we were building, you would just add a few tracks like I did here. So you just go click insert track above and I added two tracks. And then I went into the media bin and I got my logo. And then I went to annotations and I brought in a shape and then I worked on them. So that's what we're, we're going to just show here as an end result. And the other thing to note is I grouped them together because what you want to see is that um, you could actually play with the scale and work clean inside here. So I could have played with this and it's all working together. Undo that. And then it's grouped inside the bigger picture so that if we scaled it, we had the flexibility there as well with the end product and everything works together. Okay, so now let's just quickly look inside the group and see uh, what we did to do this visual branding, a cool visual branding element. So first we have the logo letters and in there you see we have the sliding behavior. Now if you look at the in, during, and out, it's not actually the default uh, sliding behavior because I changed the in to be a grow and I changed the out to be a shrink. And you can see by the little arrows here, that means I've changed the default setting values. As I've always said in tutorials in the past, the movement is always something you play with till you get the desired effect you want. And you know, with practice, you get to know that well. So in the, in the in, 
Also, I used ease in exp exponential and in the out, I used ease out back. So again, you know, you need to play with these to get what you want. The during is the fading and you can see is an opacity and a loop time. And you can tell that that effect is in there because you see the white sort of opacity varying when I, while I'm moving around the playhead here in the middle. Okay, so that sort of covers how the sliding behavior worked in there. Now we have two custom animations we added, and they are to support the spin and the of the of the logo. And that was done by just coming here to animations, taking a custom animation and dropping it on the timeline and tuning it as we did. So let's just show you what we did here. So at the start here, if we look here and you see in the rotation, it has zero degrees. And then at the end of the rotation, it has minus 360. So what it, what I did in essence is one counter, one clockwise spin. And if you see the clockwise spin is sort of consistent with the way the, the vertical lines or sticks as I call them come in, right? So they're going in a clockwise motion and then things all line up. And then when things go apart, the, the sticks or vertical lines are going to be going the other way. So I spin my, my uh, logo the other way. So at the start of the keyframe, it's at that minus 360, which where it was when it finished the original spin. And then in the end, it comes back down to zero. And that back down to zero from some, from minus 360 to zero puts a counterclockwise spin, which is consistent with the way the sticks are spinning. So that's all there is to it. You know, play with this and, you know, custom brand your assets and you'll have lots of fun. I just love how this turned out and it was all based on the asset from the library. And yes, there is a tip number six. We didn't end at number five. And tip number six is add your asset that you just created, your custom branded asset, back to the library so that you can reuse it. And that's pretty simple to do. So here I'm just right clicking on the asset and I'm clicking add to library. And uh, the, the name I have, I use a GI prefix. That's why I named this group asset before. So it defaults the name here when I'm ready to add it to the library. So I said GI space dash space live asset because it's based on the assist live asset. And I'm calling this V1 and it's going to go in my GI branding, which is the right place for me to go. Click OK. Now you see it's added back here. It's in my G GI. It's in my Gord Eisman uh, branding library. And I'm just going to add it into my category for lower thirds. And to do that, I just drag it in. And now you can see it. It's right here. And we're done. Wow. As you can see, customizing lower thirds library assets is quick and pretty easy to do. Be sure you check out the TechSmith Asset Library online for lots of free assets like the one we used here today. You'll find the link in the video description below. And if you need any assistance with your Camtasia projects or with editing and producing your videos, be sure to reach out to me through Messenger or my website, GordEisman.com, and we can have a chat. See you in another video soon.